President Trump is punching back against critics, especially in the media, who say after just 30 days in office, his administration has gone off the tracks. He made his case this week in an extraordinary news conference, and then yesterday afternoon in Florida in a campaign-style rally. We are here today to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I hear your demands, I hear your voices, and I promise you, I will deliver. I promise that. Joining us now from Mr. Trump's Mar-a-Lago Club in Palm Beach is White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus. Reince, I want to start with President Good morning, Trump's Chris. tweet on Friday afternoon. This is what he wrote. The fake news media, failing New York Times, NBC News, ABC, CBS, CNN, is not my enemy. It is the enemy of the American people. Reince, the president believes that a free and independent press is a threat to the country? No, I think I think for the most part, and I, and I understand where he's coming from, um, is that there are certain things that are happening in the news that just aren't honest. And we're not talking about everyone, Chris. We're not talking about all news, but we're talking about something that I guess he's termed as fake news. Let me give you an example. First of all, the New York Times last week put out an article with no direct sources that said that the Trump campaign had constant contacts with Russian spies. Basically, you know, some treasonous type accusations. We have now all kinds of people looking into this. I can assure you, and I've been, I've been approved to say this, that the top levels of the intelligence community have assured me that that story is not only inaccurate, but it's grossly overstated, and it was wrong, and there's nothing to it. And so if I can say that to the American people, then what does it say about the story? The next day, Chris, the Wall Street Journal puts out a story that says that they have anonymous sources that say that the intelligence community is purposely cutting out material from President Trump's uh, 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 briefing materials that he gets every day. That then proved to be untrue. All the agencies put out a statement saying it was totally inaccurate. Then we get okay, thrown right, off listen, the I get, rails I get, for three I get days that you don't responding like, to this Ryan, stuff. I get, the well, fact that you don't it, like, I get the fact that you don't like some stories. I, first of all, you made some news there at the top, and I want to f follow up on that. You say, because you've said before you weren't part of the campaign, so you couldn't speak to that. You say that the intelligence community says that there were no contacts between anyone in the Trump campaign, any associate of Mr. Trump, and the, any, anybody uh, uh, involved as a Russian agent as to the campaign and collusion in the campaign uh, with Russia. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they told me, absolutely. They, they have made it very clear that that story in the New York Times is complete garbage. And quite frankly, they use different words than that, okay? Who was it that and, said and that? And when I read back, Who was it that I'm not going to tell you. Wait a minute, wait a minute, right? You, you're, you're just complained about unnamed sources. You're using an unnamed source. Well, because I didn't ask for approval to use their name, but I will tell you this. When I say top-level people, I mean top-level people, okay? So no and collusion so, whatsoever that's between the same anybody way. involved with Let Trump and anybody involved with Russia in the 2016 campaign? No. And if you look at Devin Nunez's <clears throat> comments in the actual paper on the Chairman record, of the House Chris, Intelligence Committee. He was briefed by the FBI, and what did he do? He turned around and went on the record and said that this story is complete garbage. Okay, but here's okay? the problem. Here's so the problem. here we are. <laughs> Ryan, here's, wait a minute. Here's the problem. I don't have any problem with you complaining about an individual story. We sometimes get it wrong. You guys sometimes get it wrong. I don't have any problem with you complaining about bias, but you went a lot further than that, or the president went a lot further than that. He said that the fake media, not certain stories, the fake media are uh, an enemy to the country. We don't have a state-run media in this country. That's what they have in dictatorships. Okay, listen, Chris. It's not just two stories. Then it's followed up by 24 hours a day, seven days a week of other cable stations, not necessarily Fox, that all day long on every Chiron, every seven minutes are talking about Russian spies, talking about the intelligence community, talking about how me and Steve Bannon don't like each other and what's Kellyanne doing. All this just total garbage, 
unsourced stuff. Listen, there's nothing wrong with background. Reporters need background information. We need to communicate with reporters and give reporters context. All I'm saying, though, is if you're going to come out with this, <clears throat> if you're going to come out with this story that says Russian spies are talking to your campaign, my God. I mean, you actually, I think you should in some cases, or in most cases, actually have a named source. Look what we've done. We've repealed TPP. We have signed a coal bill to save the coal industry. We named Neil Gorsuch. We de put an and executive you know what, order Ryan's, in to I, I, deregulate Ryan's, the federal government. All of that. There's so we many the things Gorsuch, I can talk wait, about. Wait a minute. We and all of the other cable channels had uh, c covered uh, live the announcement of Neil Gorsuch. Right. And covered live a lot of about, these other events. Covered live for exactly, an hour and 15 the minutes. Hiring freeze, the president's news conference. Freeze, Here's the problem. When the president Chris, says, on, we're, when the president freeze, says that we're the enemy of the American people, it makes it sound like if you're going against him, you're going against the country. Here's the problem, Chris. The problem is, is that you're right. Some of these things were covered. But you get about 10% coverage on the fact that you had a very successful meeting with Bibi Netanyahu, the, the Prime Minister of the UK, the Prime Minister of Canada. We covered all of those uh, news you, conferences you started live. The Everybody Obama. did. Right, sure. Yeah, for about, yeah, right. But then as soon as it was over, the next 20 hours is all about Russian spies. But you don't no get to tell us along, what to do, how right? How nothing's happening. You don't Give get to tell us break. what to do any more than, than Barack Obama did. Barack, Barack Obama whined about Fox News all the time. But I got to say, he never said that we were an enemy of the people. Let me tell you something. He said a lot of things about Fox News, Chris. I think you ought to go check the tape. He blamed you for a lot of things. And I'm surprised as someone from Fox that you'd forget all the shots that he took. No, he at took Fox the shots, News. and, and we didn't like him. And frankly, we don't like this either. Because, uh, you know, he, but he never went as far as President Trump has. And that's what's concerning, because it seems like he crosses a line when he talks about th that we're an enemy of the people. That is concerning. I think you should be concerned. I think you should be concerned about mainstream news outlets uh, that are acting like, you know, Washington Daily gossip magazines instead of the way it used to be, where you'd get a few uh, uh, sources on the record. Yeah, you'll need some background, and maybe yes, you'll need some anonymous sources. But to, to accuse an organization of being in constant contact with Russian spies is outrageous. And every day, it's something different. It's some other source that, that is absolutely untrue. Instead of talking about the things that are going on. All right, can I ask you about another? we're doing every single day. I need to ask you another question about Russia, which you'll be delighted to answer. In his news conference this week, President Trump defended uh, former National Security Advisor, now former, retired General Michael Flynn, and his phone call with the Russian ambassador. Here's the president. Mike was doing his job. He was calling countries and his counterparts. So it certainly would have been okay with me if he did it. I would have directed him to do it if I thought he wasn't doing it. I want to be precise here. The president doesn't think there's anything wrong with uh, his pick. He wasn't then in office for National Security Advisor calling the Russian ambassador to talk about we're going to review and perhaps lift sanctions precisely on the day that President Obama imposed those sanctions because Russia had interfered in the U.S. election. He doesn't think there's anything wrong with that? Well, I don't think there's anything. Our legal department looked at this, too. I don't think there's anything wrong with the subject of sanctions or new sanctions coming up. I don't think that that in and of itself is wrong, and I think that's what the president is saying. I'm, I'm talking but specifically about happened. this phone call at this time. You've got, yeah, and you've the got, legal you've department got President Obama, it. who was okay. so outraged. I, I don't know why you're so uh, No, no, because... Here. I mean, it's fine that you're so going bananas here, Chris. Look, I'm not, I'm not going bananas. I'm asking you about the fact that it seems are. odd Ridiculous. that the president of the United States, then Barack Obama, imposes sanctions because he says that Russia had had interfered with undermined our election and you've got mike flynn calling the russian ambassador and saying well don't worry about it we'll review the sanctions and you don't think there's anything wrong with that well you don't know he said you don't know he said that what, what the president is saying is that if the subject of sanction the new sanctions came up that that in of itself is not a problem i mean i, I you know how, how does when you have a national security advisor that's calling 30 different leaders a day there are a lot of topics of the day that come up. What are, what are these people supposed to do? Well, why, did the, why did the, the acting attorney general, Sally Yates, warn the White House 
uh, counsel, Don McGahn, and why was it called into a meeting and you were met with Bannon and the president? Uh, at, at, why, why did all of that happen? Obviously, there was something troubling what in, what, why did in that happen? conversation. It happened because Sally Yates, because Sally Yates alerted and gave a heads up. It was later determined that there was no investigation ongoing. We looked at the, the, the matter. The legal department <laughs> determined that uh, there was nothing illegal that happened in the conversation, but then the issue turned to whether or not Michael Flynn was being honest and direct with the vice president, and ultimately the president determined that it was an unsustainable situation, and he fired or he asked for and the resignation and let me ask of Mike you, Flynn. I mean, that, Ryan's, let me that's ask, what happened. And let that's me ask you about at. that timeline, if I might, because the acting attorney general notified the White House on January 26 about discrepancies between what Flynn had told Vice President Pence about the call and what transcripts showed Flynn had, actually, Flynn had actually said. But while the president and Steve Bannon and you all knew, the vice president didn't find out till he read it in the paper on February 9th. Question, why didn't you as chief of staff tell the vice president over the course of 14 days? Well, look. Here's what happened. Yates came in, gave a heads up to the to the White House counsel. White House counsel looked at the matter the next day or the day after the investigation was closed and no longer going on. Then the issue shifted to whether or not something was done that was wrong. The vice president was then looped in on the situation and we talked to the vice president about whether or not Michael Flynn was being honest or not. The vice president knew that there was an FBI uh, interview. And then ultimately we decided after about 10 days bringing the vice president in that we uh, decided that he wasn't being honest. That was the timeline. It happened very quickly, Chris. But, but, but the vice president says he didn't know for 14 days that he had been misled by Michael Flynn. No, the vice president knew that we were, what the vice president didn't know, I believe, was that Sally Yates gave an initial heads up to Don McGahn. But once that, once the next day came and that investigation was closed, Chris, that topic didn't come up again. This whole conversation shifted to whether or not Michael Flynn was honest okay. with the vice president. He was then looped in on that conversation and it was determined that he wasn't. Okay. That was it. Okay. One final question. <laughs> and I, we'll have a, a better conversation next time, Ryan. The president is All now right. is now trying to find a new national security advisor. In fact, he's interviewing a number of people today. At least two candidates, Bob Harward and David Petraeus, have reportedly been passed over because they wanted more control over how the National Security Council operates. Question, is the president insisting that a political operative, Steve Bannon, play a major role in national security, which appears to be a concern for some of these candidates? Yeah, I don't know. The answer to that is no. And the answer to the first part of the question is, number one, the issue with Admiral Harward never came up. Um, and we haven't really gone down the road uh, with General Petraeus, but as to the staffing at the NSA, the new NSA director can do whatever that he or she wants to do with the staffing at the NSA. But when you say no, are you saying that Steve Bannon, the, the new NSA director, can say, I don't want Steve Bannon as a formal member of the National Security Council? The president, the president has said very clearly that the new NSA director will have total and complete say over the makeup of the NSC and all of the components of the NSC. And there is no demand made by President Trump on any candidate for NSA director including, at all. So including getting to the Steve Bannon so again, out. Because it's very unusual to have a political operative in that role. So rep those reports that you're citing, those are more fake news stories that are completely untrue. We've never put demands on an incoming NSA director. The NSA director can do whatever he or she wants to do with the NSC and the makeup of the NSC. And the president has been very clear on that topic. And again, here we go, talking about more news articles that are not based on facts. But you know what, I, you know what I did, Ryan? But our word doesn't matter. I, I asked you about it, and that's how good reporters find out whether or not something's true. Well, you're a good reporter, <laughs> because you're a good reporter. Ryan, thank you. Thanks for your time today. Always good to talk with you, sir. All right, thank you.